Thanks to the supporters of channel member Andrew Mayo. Yes, I know we're still in the bottom half of the table. I know, I know we're well into the second half of the season now. What you've got to remember is it is close at the top of the Premier League this year. Yes, that is still relevant to us. We're only four points outside of the Europa League spots. We're still in the Conference League. How, how much more do you want? Do you want to be in the top half of the table? I'll see what I can do. Hello, welcome to part 130 of Homegrown. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have two games for you in the Premier League. We're at home against Leeds and away against Burnley. Since you were last with me, we've uh, we've been doing okay, apart from facing Arsenal and Man United back-to-back -back again, which, if you recall, they were the first two games of the season and we got absolutely battered. We've got battered again. Those two teams, they're quite good. We're not very good against them, but we did manage to bounce back with a victory over Preston in the FA Cup, so we're still in the FA Cup, um, and also a victory over West Ham in the league in a quite ridiculous match, a 5-4 win which saw a Villa Lobos hat trick. So, I, I mean, I don't really know what we're doing with Villa Lobos now. They were his first, first three goals of the season. He's not actually been out drinking since the Manchester United game six months ago. That first episode of the season was the last time he got caught out being a rascal. So, I don't know if he's changed his ways. He's still finding it hard to fit into the social group, apparently. He still has a negative. What's his negative? I don't even know where you see his negative on here. Oh, they're struggling to connect with A.D. Lillis. Who cares? Due to differing levels of professionalism. Does that mean A.D. Lillis is a model professional? Um, I don't understand. He doesn't mention his professionalism either. You would, I think Kenlin Richardson is a model professional. You'd think they'd have different levels of professionalism. But either way, Villa Lobos, when he wants to be, is still a very, very good player. Let's have a look at what his development is looking like. So he actually is starting to improve again after his uh, after his little incident where all his attributes fell down. They are all starting to creep back up again. So maybe he's over whatever has been wrong with him. We can we can only hope if we can get him back at his best. We have a superstar on our hands. So that would be lovely. This is the team that we're playing for the Leeds game. Then we are back in the four two four. Uh, more often than not. And Perez is effectively our, our permanent number one at this point. He's uh, he's had quite the little run of games. Um, he's now played 11 games for this season. Only conceded the 25 goals in 11 games. But other than that, he's great. Oh, in other news, Abagai was on the transfer list briefly at Inter, but wouldn't come back to us. We tried to loan him, and then they took him off the transfer list and the deal fell through. But I think Abagai returning to the club might not be unrealistic in the next six months to a year or so. We are keeping very close tabs on him. He's played nearly 20 games for England now, so certainly a player that I wouldn't mind bringing back into the mix. So, Perez in goal. About four of Kavalik, Elias, Fazikas, Thomas. That is our first choice back four and goalkeeper. Now, it's very different to how it looked a year ago, but they are our boys. Two homegrown players out of the youth team in there as well. Lovely stuff. And then Perez and Oliveira in midfield, Hordy and Park out on the wings, and Francisco and Villalobos as our two centre forwards. And Francisco still top scorer by quite a stretch at the moment. Although, as we saw, um, Villalobos is potentially starting to rediscover some form. Now he's got his head right. So, fingers crossed, he more than anybody, I would like to go out there and carry on where he picked up in the less where he left off in the last match. The defense, maybe not so much. We conceded four goals against West Ham. So if we could maybe do better defensively, but still score five goals and have Villa Lobos play well, that'd be lovely. This is a great run from Park. Park charging forwards, but ends up with the ball on his weak foot, has a shot from range when he's probably going to be best placed playing in any of the three very talented attacking players who were around him there. And um, there's goals in all three of them. And Park decided to go it alone because he knows he's the pick of the bunch. He's the best player at the club. And sometimes I think he forgets that his teammates are quite good as well. Perez now in midfield. He has made this central midfield position his own this season. We, I don't think we miss Gregoire. I think Perez has slotted into that position very, very comfortably. That's probably the one spot where we miss Gregoire because Perez doesn't make those tackles. But as a creative midfielder, 
Lovely job. Park, cutting infield again. This time finds Hordy, who's got to try and get past his man. Finds Villalobos, who has an audacious effort from long range. And it goes, uh, it goes just over from him. Um, and our leads have got an attack of their own. If we can get the ball in there, Perez does exactly that. But it just lumps it forward. He's kind of done the opposite of what I've described him being good at there. He's been his distribution and his passing is usually excellent, but he can't tackle. He just did the opposite. And now Hordy trying to show that Park, anything you can do, I can do better. He's cut in field, but he's actually laid the ball off to Park. And Park has been clattered in the same spot he's been fouled a million times before. If Park has the ball in that area, the penalty area, it almost always leads to a penalty. He just goes there, stands still, and waits for someone to foul him. And it's what's it's happened again. Park's going to get up, take the penalty himself, to hopefully put us 1-0 up in what is a very important game against Leeds as we continue to try and push back into the top half of the table. And Park does score a 14th goal of the season for him. It's home one, Leeds nil, and we'd like to have... A look at the league table, please. We don't need to look at a replay of a penalty being taken, but a league table is always a nice thing to see. And there we go. As things stand, this would put us back up to ninth place. Our spiritual home. We've finished in ninth place in the Premier League more than any other place in any other league throughout this save, I think. It's where we feel comfortable. And our Todd Thomas charging down the right wing where he feels comfortable usually, but he's given the ball away. And now we've just got Francisco chasing shadows a little bit as he tries to win the ball back and now Leeds have switched the play they're coming down the other flank this time that's a lovely pass and some pretty static defending and poor goalkeeping all around I mean that's just it feels very against the run of play the defence have just kind of let that happen it's gone in the gap between Elias and Kavalik, which I mean that's probably 30 games of experience between them and then Perez just isn't a sweeper keeper yet he might get there, but I need him to be a sweeper keeper in my team. That's what we like. And I'm telling him to be one, and he just doesn't get there quick enough. I think Alex Williams gets there and makes that save. But we are continuing to persevere with Perez because he's going to be the better one long term. That's what I need to keep telling myself, even if it is going to cost us goals and points here and there at the moment. Park has picked up an injury, which is... Not ideal to lose your best player. Um, we will bring on Veloso. Will we bring on Veloso? We will bring on Veloso. I'm going to put Villa Lobos out onto the wing. And um, we've played him on the wing a few times this season. He, even though he got a hat trick in his last game as a finisher, he's still not all that. So I don't mind him out on the wing where he can use his pace and his skill to create chances for others. And Veloso, as we know, is a proper poacher, a proper finisher who would be in the team today if it hadn't been for Villa Lobos coming off the bench in the last game and getting a hat trick. Um, Hordy is going to come off as well. He's having a poor game. We're going to bring, bring Richardson on for him. And we're also going to take off. See, where's our central midfielders? I want to bring I want to bring Lillis on as well, but we're going to have to bring him on for Francisco. So we're going to bring Lillis on, stick him up front where. He can play as, I guess we can leave him as the complete forward. Lillis can be out there as a winger. And we will go attacking and we're going to try and grab a winner because Leeds are not as good as we are. I don't know where they are in the league, but this is a game we want to win. Fazekas with the header and it goes just over. Uh, Le in fact, Leeds are one place above us in the league. So maybe I'm being a little bit over exuberant expecting us to get a win against them, but... I'd like to think we're we're better than a mid-table Premier League team now, even though that's exactly what we are. At home against a team like Leeds, we've got to be looking for wins. Um, and we've left ourselves a little exposed at the back here. And yeah, we're just very susceptible to that kind of thing. Oh, it's very, very troubling. I mean, is that Fazikas? He's not really doing anything there, is he? Perez might as well not be there. He's had two opportunities to make saves today and not made either of them. Leeds, or oh, is that us who've had two shots on target? Maybe I, I think I'm reading the stats backwards. Maybe I'm being a little harsh on Perez. Um, Leeds knocking the ball around nicely. Kavalik struggling to make the interception again, and this time Perez does make a save. And come on, boys. This is absolutely not a game we should be losing. This is story of our season. We're just... 
not quite there. And I don't think it's the fact we need players. I think we need to give these players time. There's not an obvious area of the team where we're like, yeah, we need a better player in this role. I think we've got the players. We're just in a transitional period. There's lots and lots of new faces. If you compare this 11 to 18 months ago, it's a completely different side and they just need time to improve and time to gel. And I think we'll get there. I mean, I'm trying to be patient and not change too much. Obviously, if we get sucked into a relegation battle, then I'll have to change too much. But for now, I'm just going to have the faith, keep doing what we're doing, and hope that goals will come. Veloso, 10 and 10 for the season now. Like I say, he's a proper goal scorer. I think he's probably back in the team from the start in the next game because I think he's probably the man, more than anybody in this squad, who's going to be our 30-goal-a-season striker because he's just a poacher. Three three bites of the cherry there. But he's a finisher, even though you didn't necessarily see it there. And um, We are still trying to attack. There's 90 seconds left in this game. If we can grab a win from this. That, that shows great character from this young side. Lillis charging forward. Lillis looks very good here. Lillis playing it across to Richardson, to Perez. We've got men in space. We've got a free kick. Right, this is your opportunity. A red card for Leeds, a free kick in a very dangerous area on the on the uh, on the edge of the D, and for some reason the free kick didn't even warrant a highlight. Two two. I feel like we could have just as easily won that, but at the same time, just as easily lost it. So I suppose in that kind of situation, a uh, a draw is probably fair, even if it makes me a little bit grumpy. No sooner do I say that we're looking at my full strength best team that I have to change three parts of it because we only had three ga three days between games, so half the midfield are injured. Well, not injured, tired. Uh, Perez tired, Park very tired, um, and oh no, Oliver Oliver is still in. I've got my I've got myself confuddled, um, but Pasotti comes in to play alongside Oliver and Lillis coming in to play on that right hand side. I am becoming quite the AD Lillis fan. Um, he's having a pretty good season for us so far. Fingers crossed you get to see a little bit of that today. Um, certainly probably higher up the pecking order than Richardson at the moment because Hoddy is kind of hogging that left-hand side as part of this new look. New look-ish, 4-2-4. I mean, the new look is we're playing for proper left-back and an inverted player further forward rather than the other way around. So... It's basically the same system we'd been using, but I like it. Once we get into Europe, uh, or once we we continue in Europe, which will likely be on tomorrow's episode, we're probably going to be going back to the 4-3-3 just to get Passotti in behind the midfield too to provide a little bit of extra cover. I suspect at that point we might also see the return of Alex Williams as well, at least for the Conference League games, if not in the Premier League, because I think we've got a real opportunity to win that tournament. I think we do need our best goalkeeper involved to allow us the opportunity to do that um Burnley have got a counter-attack on here we've not left very many men back and it's going to cost us I think although is that Kavalek who's come across with an absolutely fantastic piece of defending we I criticized him a little bit in the last game for letting a player in between him and Elias but that was absolutely brilliant from him just proper last ditch defending maybe his positioning's a little bit questionable but he can certainly tackle can't he goodness me Right, Passotti winning the ball back in midfield. We're going to have a little bit more midfield crunch today with Passotti in there as more of a defence-minded player. Villa Lobos trying to uh, trying to burst into the air. I think he's won us a penalty here in the uh, in the park position on the other side of the pitch. And that I was going to bring Veloso in, wasn't I? I'm realizing now Villa Lobos shouldn't be in the team. Although he has just won us a penalty, so I'll allow I'll allow him to continue for now because hopefully. His burst forward leads to our breakthrough. It's going to be Passotti to take, and Passotti scores, and it's Burnley nil, home one, a, sec a second goal of the season for Passotti. And to celebrate, I've just bitten my tongue. Ah, that's incredibly uncomfortable. Blah. Right, two, one nil up. Premier League table. There we go. We do jump back up to ninth place. Um, still hovering just outside of those European qualification spots. Has Villalobos just won another penalty? He's just been fouled on the edge of the area. It's going to be a question mark over whether it's a penalty or a free kick. Definitely a foul. He's been absolutely clattered again. 
Villalobos is dangerous. Pasotti, eight minutes after his first penalty, gets to step up to have another go at one. It's Pasotti for 2 0, and he scores again. And Villalobos is causing all kinds of problems for Burnley defensively. And Pasotti is uh, he's having a come of it, coming of age moment, showing that he is very, very calm and effective at taking a penalty. Two very good penalties from him. Two lovely pieces of uh, falling over in the penalty area from Villa Lobos. It's I think it's a little bit unfortunate they don't count as assists. Surely if you get fouled for a penalty, that's an assist. Villa Lobos with the corner now, and that should be a hat trick of assists for Villa Lobos. Floats it onto Fazikas's head. It's the first goal of the season for him, and at three 0 up, this is a little bit more like it. This is the home team that I've been seeing playing against some of these smaller teams lately. Burnley, uh, I mean, they're, they're another mid-table side. They're down in 12th place. We are absolutely ruining them today. And there was an opportunity there for us to go 4-0 up before half-time, at which point I think you just you just call the match at that point. Don't worry about playing a second half. It's uh, there's, only, there's only so much smashing we can do to a team. We don't need to keep scoring goals against them. It becomes unfair. Watch us lose this game now. I've done the, I've done the overexcited... I've done the overexcited half-time excitement. Um, they're getting back into this, and it starts now. Oh, God. Oh, Perez actually makes a save. That is a novelty in and of itself. Uh, Burnley now with the throw, and Oliveira clears as far as Villalobos, who just needs to get himself fouled again. Here's Francisco, who's been a little bit quiet today. If he can find Hordy, he is completely unmarked. I mean, I would question whether that's a third penalty we should be winning there. Francisco brought down in the area, but Burnley have picked the ball up and just come straight up the other end. And they do now have a goal back. And this is exactly what I was worried about. We're not going to win this, are we? After after my speech, we're now not going to win it. Pazikas, not even facing the right way for a lot of this. Elias, pretty ineffective as well at getting a challenge in. Oh, these boys at the back for me. Abba guy can't come back soon enough. Right, let's uh, let's have a look at what's uh, what's going on here. Todd Thomas is not having a very nice time, so he can come off. I'm tempted to bring Cam on as well. Erken Cam, who's one of the other defenders we brought in in the summer. Three-star current ability, five-star potential. But according to this, Elias and Fazikas are having good games. So I guess we leave them on for now. And um, we will take off Hordy. And Richardson can come on for him. And that will do for now. Right, Kavalik with the throw. There's Villa Lobos, who has been everywhere again today. After accidentally leaving him in the team, he is playing very, very well again. Not grabbed himself a goal yet, but he is doing a lot of running. He is working very hard. He's playing like my kind of striker. And he is in there. And Villa Lobos has scored. And I tell you what, we've shown a little bit of patience with him. And I am hoping that that patience has been rewarded. He's now had the best part of a year in a mentoring group with Kieran Hodgkinson. And hopefully that's sorted his head out. Lovely, lovely pass from Hordy. Lovely control from Villa Lobos. And 4-1, um, that should rubber stamp things down. We're starting to glance up at what Tottenham are up to. 38 points for them. We're three points behind them. They've got a much better goal difference. And everyone else above us doesn't necessarily look catchable but i think we are we are definitely in with a shout at that seventh place and that then gives us two potential routes into europe because winning the conference league is a europa league spot finishing seventh i think is likely to be another conference league spot so it's it's on boys and girls if we keep this kind of form up if we play like we've played in that second game for the next 15 matches of the season then I think there's a very good chance we're in Europe again next year. And that's what we need to be doing now. Europe can't be a one-off. We need to be assuming we're qualifying for Europe every year and pushing on to the Champions League within the next few years. The fact Brighton are there. I mean, Brighton came up with us, I think. Or was it the year after? So Brighton got promoted in 34. We got promoted in... 31. So Brighton up there in the... Uh, I mean, if they had a fancy takeover, how are Brighton doing as well as they are? 
consortiums, not tycoons. <laughs> Brighton have just got a good manager, I guess. Kieran Phelan, whose first job as a manager, first job in football was Ireland manager, which he did for eight years, took over Brighton when they were in the championship. And he's another one, like Slam Dunk, who's just better than me at playing football manager, it seems. Very upsetting. Right, as mentioned, we'll be back tomorrow for the uh, Conference League continuation. We don't know who we're playing yet. Um, the first round hasn't been played yet, but we're in the second round. Hopefully we get a nice, easy tie. I mean, these are the teams in the first knockout round. I'm not afraid of any of them. We could win that. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.